Which is a good question to ask since um, while unemployment is relatively low in Iowa, as we've discussed in previous episodes, in southwestern Iowa, which is where the prison project uh, is located, uh, unemployment is actually pretty high, um, especially in the construction field. And so I just named off the um, representation of the subcontractors by their states, majority from Iowa, not quite half, um, the next um, number being from Illinois, and then spread out across other states in the Midwest. And it might be safe to presume that uh, that would be how the workers are hired. But then it would just be a presumption. Um, let's see. The article goes on to say, Robert Bailey, a, spokes a spokesman for the Iowa Department of Administrative Services, said state officials have asked Walsh, Walsh Construction to hire as many Iowa workers as possible. The state will maintain weekly reports on the number of Iowans employed on the project, he added. The prison is being built using a project labor agreement negotiated with Iowa trades union leaders. Union officials and the Culver administration contend the agreement will assure that Iowa workers will be heavily represented in the project's workforce. So um, as many Iowa workers as possible, uh, Iowa workers will be heavily represented. That's not a hard figure, but it's an indicator. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that uh, works out. General construction work on the Iowa State Penitentiary Project is scheduled to begin the week after Thanksgiving. Site preparation work has been underway since spring. The new, pre the new prison is scheduled to open in July of 2013. So jobs are um, a very, very important issue here in Iowa and everywhere else in the U.S. And then also construction and planning and policy decisions that affect that construction and how jobs are allocated are also very controversial. And so um, it's good to pay attention to things like that, um, to how decisions are made and who they benefit, uh, whether it benefits the people you want it to benefit. Um, in my own personal feeling, I do believe jobs for Iowa um, created through Iowa funds should go to Iowans. I do feel that. I think it's the morally right thing to do. Um, however, it's not always the legal thing to do. Um, I, I think just from a public relations standpoint and then just a feeling in my heart that it's right that Iowa jobs should go to Iowans. Um, but then this is um, a project that's been negotiated amongst other entities, and so they'll have to make those decisions and those determinations. Um, speaking of jobs, um, there's another article here from the Des Moines Register. Um, Newton to gain 60 manufacturing jobs. This is from the Friday, November 19th Des Moines Register. And it's going on to say that Newton won $300,000 in state assistance for a 14.6 million folding carton manufacturing plant that would create 60 jobs. And so that project was one of 12 approved uh, just this past Thursday. Uh, the board's actions will create about 300 jobs, including small awards to startup companies. And um, it, the article does go on to say that Newton has struggled since longtime employer Maytag uh, closed its appliance factory and headquarters in 2007. Um, other awards um, went to two um, uh, 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 other companies. I'll just name two of them here. One is Cisco, Iowa. The Ankeny Food Distributor can snag up to $152,000. Um, and tax credits for its $4.8 million plan to build an energy-efficient office that better serves its customers. Lely USA is another company. It's a maker of dairy and gas line equipment. They plan to consolidate their North American headquarters and production facilities, and they're considering Pella, Iowa. Uh, the development board agreed to provide the company with a $335,000 loan and a $335,000 for forgivable loan for its $3.1 million project. And so that's another way that money's been allocated uh, this time um, within um, 
within uh, the state, and then hopefully Iowans will be the beneficiary of those jobs too. So it's all in the policy and the decision making. Um, but one thing I did want to note is um, the fact that money did have to be allocated in order to create those jobs. And so two things that I've noticed uh, that people have spoken on a lot recently, and that's job creation. We all want job creation because we all want jobs here. We want people working, being productive, producing, manufacturing, paying state tax, paying income tax, paying sales, sales tax, um, and property tax or you know inventory tax here in the state of Iowa. Um, everybody wants that, but it's almost like it's it's curious. I you know one thing I've never really figured out is if, if it were possible to actually create a job without spending money, um, because um, at the same time that people want to create jobs, they also want to decrease or eliminate any new spending. And so my question for the viewers, you know, who are watching. Um, is it possible to actually have job creation without spending money, um, either at the federal level or at the state level? Um, that's what I'd like to know and if it can be done. Uh, you know, I'm not sure, and so I'm asking. <laughs> okay, so I've got another article, um, and this goes back to planning here in the Des Moines area. Stagnant condo sales dog downtown Des Moines um, and so that's a, another issue um, we do have a lot of condos in the downtown area but not a, a huge percent of them are occupied and um, this is the article uh, it's from November 19th uh, Des Moines Register even with downtown Des Moines condominium prices at a seven-year low, sales in the city's core are struggling to beat last year's sluggish performance. Developers and real estate agents blame the federal government's decision not to provide financing through the Federal Housing Administration, or FHA, for many condo projects. While the rule affects condo sales across metro areas, the issue is concentrated in downtowns like Des Moines where city leaders have pushed to develop the housing market. Housing is seen as key to having a vibrant downtown and attracting workers, especially young professionals. Um, yeah, I can see that. The Polk County Assessor shows downtown Des Moines sales have tumbled about 75% from their peak of 118 in 2006. Last, 2006. Last year, 30 condos sold, the same number sold so far this year. Some developers have cut listing prices, and since listings for real estate sales are published in the Des Moines Register, I have paid attention to that, and it's true. The, the, for the houses, the condos do not sell for what they're listed. Um, basically, there's a lot of cuts to the price before they sell. Um, one, of the, um, one of the few projects downtown that qualify for FHA financing is Hubble Homes 4th Street Condos on Court Avenue, um, but Rick Tolkison said the process is difficult. Um, uh, currently about 135 condos are listed for sale downtown, um, and then developers are turning to leasing those condos. Um, whereas the sales market um, for actual sales is kind of remaining um, steady, um, you know, at a, at a lower level than um, re people really want, the rental market is bustling. Um, so I, I would have to say that, um, yes, it's a recognizable issue. It's very apparent. There's a lot of building of condos downtown. They flooded the market. Um, the law of supply and demand comes into play. There is tremendous supply of condos, but not sufficient demand. Why is the demand so low? Um, one, the listings are listed too high. They're too high. Um, they're charging Chicago prices for Des, Mo for Des Moines location, and it's not working. Um, also, the amenities um, that come with living downtown are not sufficient to justify the price. There's a lack of grocery stores um, down here.